Greetings to my solution video for uh, module four. So let's begin. We'll start with number one. They're giving us three probability distribution tables and we are being asked to verify whether these are uh, valid probability distributions or not. There are two things you need to check. Uh, you need to check that the sum of the probabilities adds up to one. So the sum of the probabilities adds up to one for all of these tables. And you also need to make sure that the probabilities are between 0 to 1. So as you notice, uh, there are no restrictions on the first column. So the first column could be anything. And in this case, the first row, the values of the random variable, there are no restriction of those. So there's no restriction on the first column. These numbers could be anything. So no restrictions there. But your restrictions are on the probability column. So in order for a probability distribution to be a valid distribution, uh, you need to make sure that these two conditions hold. So let's check those. You could come to the bottom of the second column and you can add them up. Sum of these numbers here. easier to add them on a computer than an iPad, but it is what it is, so let's look at it. Uh, the probabilities add up to 1, they're all between 0 and 1, none of them are negative, so that's a valid probability distribution. Let's look at this one. Uh, if I go home, I'll probably get the summation sign, so I don't have to type a command, sum, that's a 1, and all the probabilities are between 0 and 1, so that's a valid probability distribution. And this one, I don't even need to add, because I immediately see here that one of the probabilities is negative. And as soon as you recognize one of the probabilities to be negative, then you don't even need to add, because this property has been violated. It's not between 0 and 1, it's less than 0, so you don't even need to worry about the second uh, property. As long as one of the properties fails, you don't need to verify the other one. So the third one is not a probability distribution, a valid probability distribution. All right, and once again, it's not, it's not not valid because of the negative 30. Negative 30 is okay. It's okay to have negative values in the X column, but it's not okay to have negative values in the probability column. Anyways, move on to the second one. We're doing the same thing here, but we also have to construct the histogram for this table. I've taken the liberty of typing them up. So let's see if it is a valid probability distribution. Let's go home and let's calculate the sum. Yeah, the sum adds up to one. All the probabilities are positive between zero and one, so we're good. Let me delete that. Now it wants to it wants a histogram and if you recall for the histogram we need to we need to uh, delete that X there select the columns and rows there you go go to insert and create a histogram go to charts columns and then you get an option of whichever let's do it pretty and there's the histogram for that. Of course, I've shown you how to connect these columns back in module two, so you can go ahead and do that. I don't know if iPad will do it. This is usually done on a PC. Yes, you don't have a right click on the iPad, but usually you would right click on one of these columns and go format to the format option and turn the gap width into a zero. Let's move on, so that's that. Let's move on to the third question here. They're giving us a probability distribution. They're asking us A, B, C, D. Is it valid? What's the average? What's the variation? And what's the range of usual values, which is a concept you need to recall from module two, which is mean plus or minus twice the standard deviation. So let's start with determining if this is a valid probability distribution. Let's add them up. Yes, it is, and the probabilities are all between 0 and 1. All right, so it wants us to calculate uh, the average and the variation, so which means I need to calculate my xp's and x square p's. xp is just x times p, and I'll 
calculate the other one too so I can drag them down together. This one is equal to x squared times p. Now if I drag them down, I'll have my x p's and x square p's and of course I need their sums. And I like to do the sum with a different color so you guys could separate the two from the rest of the table. And there are the sums. Now, is this a valid probability distribution? Yes. What's the average? The average is 2.55. It's that number there. So it's just equal to, you could just click on it. Just copied my equal signs. So V is equal to this number here. I guess it doesn't do it with the mouse on the iPad. So let me just get rid of this and it's equal to that number. That's how Excel doesn't cooperate with you sometimes. So you can, I'm going to just write 2.55. I don't have to use a command. I can just literally type that number. That's the mean. All right, now for the variation, uh, remember, it's always the larger number minus the smaller number next to it, minus the smaller number. I don't know why it doesn't like what I'm doing here. So F42 minus uh, 2.55 to the power of 2. For some reason, it doesn't like that particular cell. I don't understand why, but it happens in Excel. And instead of looking for the reason why, you just go ahead and type the number. I think you can, you can circumvent the issue there on that particular cell. God knows what's wrong with that particular cell in which I can't select anyhow. So instead of clicking on it, I could just write 2.55. And this is a glitch that comes up once in a while on Excel, and it's good that we encounter it so you could see that it could happen to anyone. Anyways, that's the, uh, that's the variation. And uh, now it wants us to find the range of usual and unusual values. Now, in order to do that, guys, I also need to calculate the standard deviation because in order to calculate the range of usual and unusual values, I need to be able to have my mean, which I do is 2.55, and I have to plus minus twice the standard deviation from it, but I don't have the standard deviation. I only have the variance, which is 1.4075. How would I find the standard deviation? I just find the square root of that number. 1.4075 square root of the variation so great now I have my mean which is 2.55 and I have my standard deviation which is 1.18638 now I just have to double this and plus minus it to and from 2.55 so let me just show you how that's done so basically, I'll write it first. So it's basically the mean, which is 2.55 plus and minus. That means you have to do one of each. Two times the standard deviation you calculated. And let's use four digits, 1.1864. To round it somewhere. And that's the range of usual and unusual values. So it'll just be two point, there'll be two things coming out of this. It'll be 2.55 minus twice 1.1864. And it'll be 2.55 plus twice 1.1864. And again, this is something you did in module two. You kind of use it everywhere in stats whenever they ask you to find the range of usual values. So usually I call this bottom number the minimum usual value. And I call this the maximum usual value. Basically, the two border points that anything inside is usual, anything outside is unusual. So let me just call it that. So I'm just going to call it the minimum usual value. And I'm going to call this the maximum usual value. And the calculation is pretty simple. It's the mean minus 2 times the standard deviation minus two times yeah and type that 
1.1864. And then the max value would be the mean plus 2 times 1.1864, 1.1864. And that's the range of my usual and unusual values for this exercise. Let me just clean it up. And there we have it. Let's move on to number four. It's giving us a probability distribution again. Again, I took the liberty of typing it up on Excel. And it's asking us to calculate the expected value. The expected value is the average which basically means I have to calculate the XP's. So let's do that. It's X times P. Drag it down. Let me see, fill and drag it down. There we go. So those are all my XP's. And now in order to calculate the expected value, I just have to sum them. And there is my expected value. It's the sum of the XP's. Let's move on to number five. Another probability distribution. Here we have a missing probability. And uh, we saw that in the lecture that if you have a probability distribution and you know the fact that they all add up to one, you could use that property to find the missing probability. So if the whole thing adds up to one and you're missing one of them, then obviously the way you figure it out is to, sub is to add these, the remaining ones together and subtract it from one, right? Obviously. So if the whole thing adds up to one, uh, you add 0 0.35 to 0 0.12 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.13, whatever it is, you have subtracted from 100%, and that's how you find a missing probability. Always like that. So here the way i will find this i'll just say equals to one minus open parentheses and i'll just add the other four numbers to, uh, together so it'll be that plus that plus that plus the one right under it which is in c70 c70 i can't click on it because it's being hidden by my command window, so I'll just have to type C70, but I know where that number was, and there it is, it's 0.3. How do I know I calculated the correct answer? Uh, go ahead and change the color here, let's say put it green, and let's add them up, and if I've done everything properly, that, add, that sum has to be a one, so let's see. Oh, thank God I did it correctly. So again, the way you calculate that number is to add the remaining numbers and subtract it from 100%. All right, it's asking us to calculate uh, the, the, the mean. It says what to expect. Every time they ask you what to expect, that's the expected value. So they want us to calculate the expected value and they want us to calculate the standard deviation. But recall, that if they ask you to calculate the standard deviation, you want to calculate the variance first because it's easier, and then all you have to do is take its square root to find the variance. All right, let's try to find the expected value and the variance and the standard deviation. Let me clean it up. I'll actually do it here. And remember, uh, let me just let me just call this the variance because you have to calculate that first and then we'll calculate the standard deviation okay, and let's make that something like that all right so let's see i'm gonna calculate a column of xps again and x square p's that's what i need to calculate the expected value and the variance Again, as always, XP's is X times P. You drag it down. Let's see if I'll say fill it up. Yep. So those are my XP's. Let's calculate my X square P's. Let's drag that down. And let's add them together. 
each color. So click on the sum, and there are the sums. Bold them and change the color. There you go. So now you're ready to calculate these things. The mean, again, is basically that first number there. Let's see if I can click on it now. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> All right. The variance is the second number minus the square of the first number. Let's see if I can click on it, minus the square of that 1.74. Oh, wow, it worked this time. <laughs> Interesting. Enter, and there's the variance. And the standard deviation then will simply be the square root of that number there. That's it. And then obviously how many decimal places will have to do with the instructions. They'll instruct you as to how many decimal places to use. Great. I'll do the next five on the next video. Thank you.